yeah, look, um, it's it's no secret. I've never sort of hit it or anything. Um, I'm pretty vocal about it because I know that a lot of people are embarrassed or ashamed about it. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's that's the whole point of me speaking up is to try and break that down, that there's nothing to be ashamed about. Uh, I think it's like one in five people um, suffer mental illness at, at some stage in their life. And, um, you know, it, it's something that needs to be spoken about more. But I think... The more it's spoken about, the easier it's going to be to speak about. Yeah. So, um, you know, again, that's why I'm so vocal about it. Uh, a few of my struggles were just, you know, injuries at a time that I wanted to be playing the best footy I could be. Yeah. So I'd, I'd just come out of, um, you know, the World Cup win, just signed with Cronulla. Yep. And then I had a shock in year, like injury-wise and that sort of thing, just couldn't get on the field and, um, yeah, sort of just snowboard and then, you know, all this stuff in the media and the rest of it. And yep. again, I started buying into it too much. I, now I can't remember the last time I read a paper. Yeah. So it's awesome. It, you just learn from it. And um, I ended up in rehab at the end of 18. Yep. And um, I spent a, a month over there. And just the people I was with. Um, yeah, talk, you know, me, talk me through that. Because that was in Thailand. Yeah, I went to Thailand yeah. for. Um, so a talk month. me through that process. How. how how did you, I guess, find that facility? Did you get a recommendation? And then obviously spent some time in Thailand in a completely different scenario. Yeah. Like, how was that? Yeah, so um, Shane Smith, who's a, a good friend of mine now, used to work with the Sharks. Um, he sort of just reached out to me and said, look, a few of the boys have come to me, said they know you're struggling, whatever. And I said, yeah, look, I am. And um, he just mentioned Thailand to me and, like, the rehab facility and said it might be a good idea. And I said, yeah, all right. So we spoke about it, spoke to my wife about it, and then um, she sort of said, well, if it's going to help you and us in, in turn because, you yep. know, I was shutting her out and and that sort of thing and, and just closing off from the world, um, I just jumped at it. And then two days later I was on a plane to Thailand, spent a month over there. But the, the, the good thing was um, Jordan could come over with me for the oh, first awesome. couple of days. So she was there with me for two days till I got settled in and then yep. she flew back home. And then, um, yeah, it was straight into work. And, uh, you know, we woke up every day, uh, had a, a check-in every morning. How we going? How, how was the night? Whatever. And then you have your brekkie and then you got your meetings in the morning. You got your group meetings in the morning. Yep. And then you've got like a whole schedule for each day. You got like physio, you got PT, um, activities and, and then like art classes and things like that. And then obviously you got your counselling and, and psychology sessions as well with your with your um with your doctor or, or yep. something like that so yeah every day for you know monday to friday was like that and then saturday was our activity day where we we'd go out i think we went to a water park one week we went to like this 3d art gallery another week and, and then yeah just things like that and then sunday was our day to do whatever and there's a big pool in the middle and so we just kicked back by the pool and yeah like i said some of the people in there just really opened my eyes and like made me realize that yeah i'm going through a shit time but yep. these guys have got it so much worse and um you know i can't be sitting here feeling sorry for myself i've got to try and get better and, and that sort of thing and that's when I, I you know got real good at the mindfulness and all that sort of thing and just checking in with myself and yep. um you know came back started a diary like all that sort of thing like i was in there with with guys that wouldn't couldn't get off heroin for you know 20 plus years and things like that and, wow. and then i'm looking at myself going yeah i got a bit of anxiety a bit of depression yeah you know a few painkillers here and there but yeah like looking at that and then just going you know shit you know what am, what am i doing <laughs> so um man that's like so was there many people like obviously you know you're from australia going to thailand was there many other people from like around the world I yeah guess, doing so the there was thing? a um there was a south african there was a couple of americans there was an actual um, there was a couple of Kiwis there too. There was like three Kiwis Anyone there. As well. you? Uh, one of them recognised me, but he he was telling me um, he'd been on LSD and acid for so long. He hadn't watched footy in for like five years, so he, he remembers me from when I was at Canberra. But that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, so, I probably shouldn't laugh. Yeah, at nah, that, but like it, it's wow. funny, but like at the same time, he he's sitting there laughing about it because he's in there trying to get better and that sort of thing. He'd been there, in there for two months, and it was his second stint. So yeah, wow. You know, guys that. Uh, still trying to get better after you know h however many times you know i got a lot of respect for people like that because they're still trying to make their yep. life better they're still doing the hard yards trying to do the right things yep. and all that yep. sort of stuff so you know no matter how many times you fail if you feel like you still need to get better just keep doing it